Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to begin talking about another graph algorithm. The graph algorithm we'll talk about is going to be called the shortest path algorithm. It is similar to the minimum spanning tree algorithm, but it is probably one that you are more familiar with. Something like, how do you get from your apartment to wherever you're trying to go as quickly as possible? Obviously, that's finding the shortest path from wherever you are to wherever you need to go. So, for our shortest path algorithm, we have some starting location, V1, and some ending location. For this example, we're going to call it V13. Then the question is, what is the shortest path to get from V1 to V13? Looking at it, maybe it's not so obvious. I can solve some other problems kind of easily, though. So, for example, the shortest path from V1 to V2 is this path there that goes from V1 to V2. I know that to be the case. Similarly, what are the possible ways I could get to V8? It looks like I'm going to have to do a lot. There's no way around going up here, and then I could go down there, but I potentially could go all the way up here, over there, and then back, and it's... Maybe not so obvious how we can do this. So what if we had new more information? So let's suppose that I told you in advance the following information. That this was the shortest path to all of us, the nodes that I'm going to be interested in. So we're going to have this path there and this path here. Let's suppose I knew for a fact that the shortest path from V1 to V7, V5, and V10 was those paths I just drew. What is the length of those paths? Well, this path has a length of 8 to get to here, 12 to get to here, 14 to get to here, 18 to get to there, 20 to get down there, and then 23 to get up there. This other nodes, we have... 15 to get to there, and 20 to get to there. So, what is the shortest path now from V1 to V13? Well, any path that gets to V13 has to go through V5, V7, or V10. There's no way around that. So if I knew these were all the shortest paths, what paths do I have? Well, I can either go from V5 to V13, that would have a cost of 27 to go along that edge. To go along this edge has a cost of 28, and to go along this edge has a cost of 26. Therefore, it must be the case that this is the shortest path to V13. Assuming that I didn't lie to you about what those paths were. So, that is a useful bit of information, which is if we've gotten really close, one node before, then we can presumably do the next step. That kind of seems like it's getting towards an algorithm. The way that we typically phrase this is in the opposite sense, where I'm going to say, suppose that this is the shortest path to V13. If I knew that for a fact, what if I were to remove this edge? Hmm. What can I say about that path to V10? Well, I can say without a doubt, it must be the shortest path to V10. Because if there was a shorter path, I'm going to draw in a fake path here. Let's suppose that this path to V10, all highlighted in green, was shorter than the one I had in red. If that was the case, then taking the green path and then that final edge would necessarily result in a shorter path to V13. But that cannot be the case because I already claimed that the red path was the shortest path to V13. So if I have the shortest path to a node from a starting node, then removing the destination node, the shortest path to the previous node must also be the shortest path. So let's look at that mathematically. It's a little easier to understand. This theorem says if I have the shortest path from V1 to VI, then the shortest path from V1 to VI minus 1 must be that same path. They're the exact same set of nodes. If there was a shorter path, then we would simply use that shorter path and then add on the edge from VI minus 1 to VI and find a shorter path from V1 to VI. Therefore, this must be the shortest path. I have a typo in my notes that will be updated in your version of the notes. Now... What if we actually made this a harder problem? That sounds like a strange thing, but sometimes generalizing a problem can cause you to come up with a better solution. Sometimes solving a specific problem turns out to be more difficult than solving a generic problem. So let's consider this problem. What is the shortest path from V1, that starting node I had before, to every single other node in the graph? That might actually be easier. So let's figure out how we can do this. 
what is the shortest path from V1 to V2? Well, it can't possibly go from V1, or sorry, V1 to V8, and then anywhere else, because this edge from V1 to V2 is the least of those edges. So let's make this greedy choice and add V2 to my shortest path tree, kind of like we had a minimum spanning tree. And then let's see what other nodes we can consider. Well, I can get to, from my red nodes, I can get from V1 to V8, I can get from V2 to V8, V2 to V6, and V2 to V3. So let's maybe store a bit of information. I'm gonna store a seven there that says the cost of getting to V2 is seven. Therefore, the cost of getting to V3 is 11. Cost of getting to V6 is 15. Cost of getting to V8 this way is nine. Therefore, the cheapest thing I could add would be to add V8 to the tree here. And then the cost of V8 is eight. And then what nodes can I possibly reach? Nowhere from V1. From V2, I can reach V3, V6. From VA, I can reach V6, V11. So which is the cheapest? This costs 11, 15, 15, 12. 11 is the cheapest, so let's add that to our tree. And the cost of getting to V3 would be 11. And then we would need to do the exact same thing over and over again. This one takes a bit of time, so rather than doing this as our first example, I'm going to leave this for you guys to practice after I do a different example. So let's look at a different example. Let's look at this one. We're gonna start at V1. We're gonna ask, what is the shortest path to every other node? There's a lot fewer edges here and a lot fewer nodes, so it'll make it a lot quicker to go through these examples. So from V1, the closest thing is V2. Then I store a value of seven there to say that it costs seven to get to V2. Then I consider V6 has a cost of eight, nine, 18, 13. Eight is the winner there. So we add V6 to my shortest path tree, put an eight next to it. Now let's look at all of the places I can reach. I can reach V3 with 13. Maybe we write a 13 there to save ourselves some time and not need to recompute it. I can reach V5 at a cost of 18. I can reach V5 at a cost of, oh, a little bit better. Eight plus nine is 17, so maybe I do 17 there and remember that I'm coming from that direction. And then over here, I have a cost of 15 to get to V7. The cheapest possible place I can reach is V3. And then from V3, the only new place I can examine is V4, which has a cost of 18, 13 plus five. Now let's look at the places I can reach. I have 18, 17, 15, 15 is the winner. So we go over there. We add V7, and then we check where can we reach from V7. Well, from V7, I can reach V5 and V8. So V5 actually has a cost of 16, so it's actually a little bit cheaper to go this way to get to V5. And V8, I've never found, so the cost there currently looks like it's 22. And now, what is the cheapest among my edges, or my nodes I haven't added? The cheapest is 16, so we add that to the graph. And then, where can I reach from V5? I can reach V8, which has a cost of 21 now. I can reach V4, which would have a cost of 19, which is not better. So the cheapest node I can reach now would be V4, which I reach via this top route. And then I have another option that I could go to V8 via this path here, and that would have a cost of 22, which is not better than my cost of 21. Therefore, the last thing I add is that edge there. So that is a methodology for coming up with the shortest path tree. We slowly add nodes along as we find the cheapest possible node we can reach from our currently found nodes. We slowly add nodes to this shortest path tree, similar to our minimum spanning tree, in the exact same way, in a greedy manner. The problem is that you still need to determine if this is correct. As we saw with our minimum spanning tree, we can claim this algorithm does whatever we want, but we, without proving it, it's not obvious that these are actually the shortest paths, right? There's no meaningful way that looking at this, I could convince myself without exhausting all options or proving it directly. So we'll need to prove this to verify this. 
if you want some more practice, try and draw the trees for, for V2 and V5 and see how they compare to this tree that we have here. So that I will leave that for you guys to do. Compute the shortest path tree starting at V2. And if you still don't think you get it, compute the shortest path tree starting at V5. Those would be good practice for you to try and understand how does the starting node affect the shortest path tree that you get. For a minimum spanning tree, if there was a unique minimum spanning tree for one node, then that same minimum spanning tree worked for all nodes. There was one minimum spanning tree for the graph. For a shortest path tree, it matters where you start because we're not finding the shortest path from every node to every node. We are finding the shortest path from a starting node to every other node. So we, we are not quite solving the generic problem of how, how do I get from everywhere to everywhere. We're saying how do I get from A to everywhere. One last thing to comment on is that this is different than the minimum spanning tree. If I scroll down, I have that shortest path tree we just came up with right here. And if I scroll down, I have the minimum spanning tree for that graph, which you could compute yourself if you wanted. And notice they are quite different. Because the minimum spanning tree doesn't need to worry about past de decisions in terms of the future decisions that it makes. For the shortest path tree, we needed to consider how long did it take to travel along these edges and those costs accumulated as we went along the path, as opposed to a minimum spanning tree where we were only looking at an edge and not caring at all about how we added that edge to the tree in the first place. Finally, one thing I will mention is that if I change one of the values in the tree, this top value here, let's see how this affects everything. I would still add this node first, then add this node second. Let's shade those. Then what are my cheapest options? Well, this costs 12 and this costs 15. So I add the 12 cost node. This will cost 17 to get to. Along the bottom, nothing else changed. So that's still gonna cost 15. So we're still the next thing we add is this one, all the exact same as we had before. And now let's see how things compare. To get to V5, it costs 17 going this way. It costs 16 going this way, just like we saw before. And it costs 22 to get over here, just like we saw before, because the cost of this node is 15. Cost up here is 12. And now what is the cheapest place to reach? It's still the 16 up here. And then I update this value to be 16 plus five, which is 21. And this value to go up and to the right will be 16 plus three. That is not less than 17. So the next thing I add is 17. And now I add these notes to the graph. Sorry for not shading them in earlier. But now if I check this top path here, I have a cost of 21 going along that path. So maybe I update this to 21 and I can change the shortest path tree in this way. So if you, it is not necessarily the case that the shortest path tree is unique. It is possible that there are several shortest path trees within a given graph.